Hello, St. Mary of Sorrows community. My name is Liz Turgeon. I'm the director of St. Mary's Choir and Orchestra, our youth ensemble here at St. Mary's. We provide music for the 5 p.m. Sunday evening mass. Typically on Good Friday, the youth of St. Mary's are privileged to bring to you the living stations of the cross. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 crisis, we were unable to do that this year. So David and I, decided that we still wanted to be able to provide some musical spiritual guidance to our community, as we know that especially during these trying times, people need that little bit of hope, guidance, and familiarity. So we hope you enjoy our choices during this time. If you are part of the five o'clock congregation, you probably recognize many of our choices and some of them are new. We invite everyone who's watching this to please enter into our Lord's passion and really meditate on what it means this Good Friday. I think all of us have new ideas of what it is to suffer and we have new ideas of what can go on in this world and the things we're feeling, offer them all up to our Lord at this time. Live through his passion, meditate on it and have a wonderful and blessed Good Friday. I hope that everyone has a safe weekend and I wish you all the best. God bless. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and he began to feel sorrow and distress. And then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death, remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and had fell prostrate in prayer saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, so you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, my father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and he found them asleep for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners.
Judas went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly.
you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my right. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor, who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas? or Jesus called Christ, for he knew it was out of envy that they had handed him over. They answered, Barabbas! Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified!
Jesus, the very one of you. Jesus, the very one of you. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross.
And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani," which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one's calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge and he soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, and he gave up his spirit. Oh, who sees me? 
midst of the assembly, I will praise you. Behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men who the centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on at a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea called Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. Were you there? 